Welcome to Iceland. In this video we explore the south coast of beautiful Iceland by campervan, arguably the best way to explore the island and we will show you all you need to know for your next trip to Iceland, including tips and tricks on driving, groceries, camping and of course the most stunning spots here in Iceland. We flew with Iceland Air as Iceland Air allows a free stopover for up to 7 days and we visited the Netherlands first before we started our Iceland camping journey. They do have a coffee machine as well, which is very nice after a long flight. If you have extra groceries, you can leave it here for the next people to take for free. Over here you can plan your route. A few moments later. We got to the airport, our flight was delayed. Unfortunately, there was nobody to pick up, so we had to call, but uh, we are here and we are on the way to our first camping spot. Driving in Iceland is pretty easy, however, there's a couple things you need to know. First of all, they use kilometers an hour and the speed limit outside of towns are 90 or 70 kilometers an hour. And inside of town, they're either 50 or 30 kilometers an hour. And it's very much suggested to not speed because the speeding fines in Iceland are nothing to joke about. The other thing you need to know before you visit Iceland is how to to use a roundabout. There's so many roundabouts and if you're not familiar with them you're probably gonna have a hard time. One of the things about Iceland is that credit cards are accepted everywhere in Iceland. Now they still suggest you have some cash for camping, parking. The Icelandic krona is used in Iceland for currency and they do not accept US dollars, euros or any other type of currency and at the moment of editing here's the current exchange rate. Finding an ATM in Iceland is not an issue, however we took out about 10,000 Icelandic Krona and ended up hardly using it because they accept credit card everywhere. So if you want to take out cash, my suggestion is not to take out too much. So when it comes to grocery shopping here in Iceland, there's multiple options here, but the two best and cheapest options, I'm using cheap in air quotes because nothing is cheap in Iceland, are Bonus and Kronan. So right now we're at Kronan, we just do some groceries but be prepared to spend a lot. We went on this trip and we actually brought some food with us just to, to lower the cost of the overall trip. This is our fan, it's the Happy 2. Essentially it has two front seats, one will swivel around so you can use it as a chair to sit in the van. It has two places on the back seat so it can seat four but really sleeps two or two and a half in our case we have a little one she's only five years old so she can perfectly fit in the bed with us so this is the little kitchen it comes with a charging outlet with a usb plug and then just a regular car adapter it comes with a sink and a manual pump for water there's a water container behind it when you open the door here you can fill it up it comes with its heating system down there it's electric comes with a cooler. The back of the van, you have two doors that open. A lot of storage, so here's where we keep the suitcases, the blankets, you can see here. And again, this folds into a bed, so once we made a bed, the suitcases go under the bed, so that they're not in the way. Out of the van, there's also a sliding door, and this gives you access to the water tank. So once you open this up, you can see you have your water tank here. So in order to fill it up, you take out the hose, you take your container to a tab or waterfall or whatever you'd like and fill it up, put it back, put the hose back in and since it is a manual pump you don't have to do anything else. An interesting fact is when you look at the fans they do not have a grey water tank so anything you flush down the sink immediately goes out at the bottom and of course there is no black water tank since there is no bathroom on board so driving the fan is very easy it is an automatic as you can see so anybody can really drive it when you rent with happy campers it does come with a tablet with which is also your wi-fi hotspot it's your gps it shows you nearby attractions it's actually really really neat and really handy to have so we enjoy this a lot 
Now when you rent a van here in Iceland, you have multiple options for insurance. You can just go with the basic insurance, you can go all the way up to premium or in the middle. I would certainly recommend getting some insurance. Yes, your MasterCard may cover some, may not cover some, but you have to keep in mind Iceland is a land of extremes. The wind is just unbelievably strong. You need gravel insurance if you want to go on any gravel road, which means essentially if you go off the ring roads, it's all gravel. So even if it's not an F road, so F roads without a 4x4 are completely prohibited, but even the main, some of the main roads are gravel road. If you don't have gravel insurance, you will not be covered. So for this reason, I recommend purchasing um, some good insurance to protect yourself. It's just overall a good idea. It's not the cheapest thing. I think it was like 40 euros per day extra for us, but it gives you that peace of mind uh, that no matter what happens, you're covered and it's not gonna cost you an arm and a leg after the fact. When it comes to getting fuel, there is a lot of options here. When you rent a van, you get some discounts. Um, it's on your keychain here, as you can see here, depending on the gas station. It gives you certain amount of Krona off per liter. It's not gonna help a lot, but every little bit helps, right? So you just tap this at the pump, then use your credit card, and then start fueling up. Now, keep in mind that you know what type of fuel your vehicle takes. Our van here takes diesel, so obviously you have to put diesel in, and our insurance won't cover that either. So if we put in gasoline in our diesel vehicle, fortunately we're on our own, so just think a second before you add the fuel to it. Meanwhile, we went straight into the Golden Circle, and our first stop was Think Fed Lear. We only made a quick stop here as we had to make it to our campsite in the Golden Circle and it was already getting late as we picked a rental van up late. We are at our first campground near Geyser and unfortunately it's just pouring rain. Now the neat thing about this campground is that you can actually see the Geyser erupt every 10 minutes so that's pretty cool. Early the next morning. Welcome to day two of our Iceland adventure. We just woke up. It's very early in the morning. There's plenty of daylight. I think it was about it was light about 3 a.m. This is also a very good spot for to see the northern lights. Unfortunately, it has been raining and it is still raining, so it's overcast and cloudy. Therefore, we have not seen it. So camping in Iceland is quite different than the provincial parks in Canada. You typically just park at a spot like this and see they're making my morning morning coffee. The nice thing about this campground is there are some facilities, there's like a bouncy castle, there's a soccer field, there's showers, there's bathrooms. And it's in the golden circle, so again as you can see right over there, that's where the geysers are. And again you can see them from the campground, which is pretty amazing. So first top on the list is geyser, as you can see. Unfortunately I can't take any drone shots here, so you have to do without the drone shot. The nice thing about this place is it's free parking, can't stay overnight, but we're here about 7 a.m. in the morning and as you can see there's absolutely nobody here. So if you're not familiar with geysers, it really smells bad. It smells like rotten eggs here, but it's such a cool phenomenon. And because it's free, 100% you should stop here when you're in Iceland. We are at stop number two of our Golden Circle Tour, which is Golfoss, which is one of the biggest waterfalls here in Iceland. Another forbidden drone sign here at Gulf Falls, but honestly it's too windy, you would never be able to fly it here anyway. I don't know if we're lucky, but so far at Geyser as well as Gulf Falls, it's a ghost town. There's hardly anybody here and we're here early May, so 
Granted, it's not the best weather, but you know what? No crowd, so it's perfect. So this is the Carrot Crater, or I assume I'm pronouncing it right, I'm not sure. It's a small entrance fee. Again, no drones allowed, so if you want to take your drone here, not gonna happen, but uh, it is beautiful. We left the Golden Circle and went to the south coast to visit one of Iceland's waterfalls, Selja Landsfoss. The water in Iceland is very clean and as a result you can drink it directly out of the stream. So bring an empty water bottle, don't buy water and just drink some fresh glacier water. So the cool thing about this waterfall is that you can go behind it. Now wear a rain jacket because you're gonna get soaked. So when you are here, you are going to get wet, so bring either a raincoat or a waterproof coat. So Jelland Floss is not the only waterfall here. If you go to the left a little bit, there is a couple more and there's one that's in the cave. So we're going to just check that out right now. So we're now by the second waterfall. I'm not gonna try and pronounce it because I can't, but uh, this is the one where you can actually go in. Of course, you're gonna get soaked. So again, bring dry clothing or bring weather valid or weatherproof clothing. So right behind me there is where you enter the waterfall. Now you do need to wear boots because you do have to go through the water. Another benefit of renting a camper van is that you can literally make your lunch at the most beautiful places such as the waterfall here. We then had a short drive to our last destination of the day which is Skogar campground at Skogafoss. Here we camped right underneath the waterfall, had a view directly on the waterfall from our campsite. Amazing experience. Iceland just keeps surprising me how beautiful it is. Just this little canyon in Tukaverni Voss is just absolutely stunning. Switched over to the GoPro because we are going behind the waterfall. This camera won't do so well, so here we go. What an amazing country Iceland is.
So if you're contemplating going to Caverna Falls at Skoga Falls, 100% yes. Parking at Skoga Falls or the Skogar Campground is free. However, if you'd like to stay overnight, it's 1600 krona per person. The next morning. Waking up with this view right behind me is just absolutely amazing. This is our second campground. As you can see in the distance over there, there's some washroom facilities and showers. Now the showers you do have to pay extra for, but the washroom facilities are included. Camping is quite different here. So essentially you just park wherever and camp for the night. Since it was early in the morning and nobody was around, we decided to climb to the top of Skoga Falls for amazing views. It's a very steep climb with 428 steps leading to the top of the waterfall. So we're made it on top. Behind me is Skoga Falls. Over there, you can, over there you can see the glaciers. Iceland is such a beautiful country. Not a bad spot to camp and make your coffee in the morning. After our morning coffee, we had a short drive to Deer Hole. Deer Hole is a must visit spot. It's located on top of a big hill and therefore you have a beautiful view over Black Sand Beach with glaciers in the distance. There's a big arch. And if you're lucky, you can see puffins nesting here. Unfortunately, we missed them. This was the footage from the upper parking lot. And there's also a lower parking lot where you can see the cliffs. And the famous Rainius Fiera Black Sand Beach. From here we took a short drive to the actual Rainius Fiera beach to see the basalt columns, the black sands and the stacks in the sea. While at the beach please pay very close attention to the sign here. If it's red do not enter the beach. If it's yellow take extreme caution as there are sneaker waves that in recent years caused many emergencies and even death as the waves sneak up on you and drag you into the sea. So we made it to Rainius Fiera, which is the Black Sand Beach. You have the basalt columns behind me. Back there are the sneaker waves. You have to be very, very, very careful because they're called sneaker wave for a reason. They sneak up on you. The black sand against the background so is just absolutely stunning. After Rainius Fiera, we drove to Diamond Beach. Now this is a bit of a longer drive, but you are in Iceland. So you're gonna see stunning landscapes everywhere. And we stopped multiple times. You go through the town of Vik, which is a small little town on the Black Sand Beach. And this is also where there's a grocery store and where I suggest you fuel up. On this road, you're gonna experience Iceland to the fullest. You're gonna drive through mossy lava fields everywhere. And this is also where our first stop was. After this, you're gonna find some beautiful waterfalls in little towns. There are plenty of waterfalls or foss in Icelandic everywhere. A cool spot to stop is Dwerg Hamburg and there are the basalt cliffs on each side and in between you can see the waterfall, the Foss of Sida. After the waterfalls you're now in glacier territory so now you get to see all the mountains with snow and all the glaciers. So can Iceland get any better? Look behind me, there's glaciers everywhere. Our next stop was Breda Merkut Santur, aka Diamond Beach. So this is Diamond Beach, just on the other side of the bridge there is the glacier. Piece of ice break off, go into 
the ocean and then the waves carry it back. That's why you get the chunks of ice here on the contrasting black sand. It's really stunning here. Now there's one thing you have to do. In case you were wondering how it was tasting, it was a bit salty from the ocean. After Diamond Beach, we went across the road to Jökull Sarlon. It's a glacier where you see the icebergs, where you can see seals. One of the best experiences in Iceland and 100% recommend going here. What an amazing place and definitely the highlight of our Iceland trip. When you're here, you cannot miss this spot. It's so serene, the natural blue ice floating, crashing into each other, watching the seals swim around. Absolutely amazing. We started heading back to our campground for the night, but not before we stopped at another glacier at Fjall Sarlon. Now I have to be honest, after visiting the Jokul Sarlon going to Fjall Sarlon, it's pretty, but not as impressive as Jokul Sarlon. So if you want to have a quick stop on the way there, recommend it. But if you keep driving, it's not the end of the world. We then drove to Skaftavel campground, which is located in Skaftavel National Park. So we made to our third campground, Skaftavel, which is right by some waterfalls and the glacier. So this is the first campsite that actually reminds us of a campsite. So you have your own site. There's some hydro as well, but it's still very much you know, an open field, no privacy. But the most private for Icelandic camping so far. So there are the bathrooms and showers, garbage and recycling. This is all for tent camping. And then in the back, we have the glaciers and the mountains. So the bathrooms are nice, big and clean. And right here by Behind the bathroom is the trail that takes you to the main waterfall, Swartafoss, but there's two additional ones as well, so we're going to explore that right now. So this is where we're going, to this waterfall right here. Which I believe is the trail there. We made it to the first waterfall to hike. This is just how stunning Iceland is. You have waterfalls, you have glaciers, you have volcanoes, you have hot springs. Like, what else would you want in this beautiful country? It's just amazing here. The next morning we woke up early to go to Fjallral Gluver, which is about an hour drive and this is a canyon. There is not a lot of parking here, so come early. So we are now at a canyon that I'm not gonna try and pronounce, but the name is right here. And this is also known as the Justin Bieber Canyon because he filmed his music video here. So let's go check it out.
So that canyon was pretty cool, but uh, unfortunately it was just pouring rain and very windy um, because you can actually fly your drone here and I was really looking forward to flying my drone but with the amount of rain and wind it's just not safe to do so, so I guess we'll have to come back. We continued our way back and we stopped at Skoga Falls for some lunch again. So cooking in the camper is very easy when you have your stove like this. You get one of those canisters. There's a little opening in here that aligns with the piece here. Stick it in, close it up, lock it, and then with the dial here, you turn it and then you light it. What's better than cooking with the fuel? Right there you can see Skoga Falls, one of the famous waterfalls here in Iceland. Whenever we were at a waterfall, we would always fill up our water bottles for some gl fresh glacier water. As you can see here, Really clear water. After lunch, we took a short drive to Selja Vatlaleug, which is a natural swimming pool fed by a hot spring. Unfortunately, we did not bring our bathing suit and I really wish we had because it would have been amazing to swim here. Here is quite the adventure. You have to cross a waterfall. It's not obvious where the trail is other than following other people. But the environment it's in is absolutely stunning with waterfalls and mountains everywhere. So this water is actually hot to the touch, like it's almost boiling water that, uh, that is being heated by the earth. The pool was actually pretty warm, I didn't bring any swim clothing with me, but it's also covered in algae, so I wasn't sure whether I was going to swim anyway, but uh, pretty cool to see a naturally heated pool. We then drove to Fjörvagerdeg for our last official night in Iceland. When you are camping before mid-May, there's only a select amount of campgrounds open and depending on the area that you're in, you may not have a lot of options. However, the good news is you don't have to reserve. Even in the summer, you can typically always find a spot. We were really hoping to do the Rakjadalur Valley where there's a river that's fed by a hot spring and you can sit in it, but unfortunately we ran out of time. Within minutes of walking distance is a geothermal park Park and 100% recommend going here because you can boil an egg in a hot spring and eat it with bread that's made in the hot spring as well. I can guarantee you, you have never eaten an egg that tastes better than at this place. There is a small entrance fee to this place, but you do get a geyser that erupts every 15 to 20 minutes. So over here is where they make the bread. Right there. And we're gonna taste it in a minute. Most of the hot springs here are dried up, mostly as a result of the earthquakes that happened here. So unfortunately they're now dry. They used to use the hot springs here for making bread. So a unique thing to do in Iceland is to boil your egg on the geothermal ground. So what you do is you drop an egg in the water. 11 minutes later. Some hot springs eggs. Very good. This bread is also baked on site here in one of the hot springs and it's very good. After a delicious and unique breakfast, we drove about an hour and a half on the Reykjanes Peninsula. This is where there is volcanoes. This is where the Blue Lagoon is located. Unfortunately, again, we ran out of time. In 2022, in this area, there was an active volcano. Now it's dormant. Regardless, it's a beautiful area with volcanoes and the sea in the background. So this is the last stop on our trip before we return the van. Uh, Iceland has been an amazing experience and we definitely will be back. We've just done the south coast this time. Next time definitely want to do the whole ring road, but you need seven plus days in order to do so. 
didn't go to the blue lagoon didn't have time didn't really go into a hot spring didn't have enough time so we 100 percent will be back so if you'd like to see more videos like this please like this video and subscribe as well it's free so you might as well to see more upcoming videos about our travels so our last stop we are actually between the continental plates of europe and north america where you can stand in the middle and essentially be on two continents at the same time so as mentioned we're right between the north american plate and the eurasian plate and we're right here which means that if i stand in the middle of this bridge on the left is europe on the right is north america so over here on the left is the north america tectonic plate on the right is the eurasia plate so i'm literally in between continents right here right now you can see that the cracks have formed and they're drifting away so there's one thing left to do which is get some more diesel for the fan return and then go to the airport iceland has been an amazing experience and 100 percent recommend going here it's not the cheapest i would also recommend going a little bit longer than four nights like we did at the end of the day we will 100 percent be back and we want to do the whole ring road which you definitely need seven plus days to do so but it's such an amazing country just make sure you dress appropriate bring layers can't believe the wind here we have been unlucky with the amount of rain but you know what at the end of the day it doesn't matter it was such an amazing experience so thanks for watching and see you in our next video